Welcome, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the first of a series of bi-weekly Facebook Live events where we will feature experts and from across our community and the city to help our families navigate through our COVID-19 reality. I'm Carolina Valencia, Director of Communications and Digital for NYC Kids Rise, and I'm excited to welcome these amazing group of women who will share information, practical examples, and stories for your family to best support students in a remote learning reality. Families that would like to ask questions um, in English, Spanish, and Bangla, you may do so in the comments. Uh, we will have a team, our team will be reading them and responding to you in Spanish and in Bangla as well as in English. Uh, we, will, we will also make the this video, this discussion available in Spanish and Bangla after the event. Esta conversación se llevará a cabo en inglés, pero tendremos a nuestro equipo viendo sus comentarios y preguntas en español. También haremos este video disponible en español después del evento. Hena. আমাদের বাঙালি ভিউয়াররা যদি কেউ থাকেন এখানে আপনাদের জানিয়ে দিচ্ছি যে আমাদের আজকের এই যে লাইভ ভিডিওটি আছে এটা আমরা সেভ করে রাখব তার মানে ইন ফিউচারে আপনারা এই ভিডিওটি শেষ হওয়ার পর আপনারা তারপরেও দেখতে পারবেন আর আপনাদের যদি কোনো কোশ্চেন থাকে আপনারা এখানে বাংলাতেও অ্যাস্ক করতে পারেন আমাদের বাঙালি রিপ্রেজেন্টেটিভ আছে আমরা করতে পারবো ধন্যবাদ Okay, thank you. So let's start. I want to introduce Alexandra Bias Nakanishi. She is a Queens native PS148 alumna. So if we have any PS148 families, you have Alexandra and I who went to school there. She's also an early childhood education expert and a teacher, and she will share what to consider for keeping students engaged and activities that can help structure your day in the ways that best work for you. We also have here Donna Brailsford, Queens North Director of Student Services. She will share resources and the ways that schools are supporting families. Uh, Hasna Hena, our NYC Kids Rise Neighborhood Ambassador, which many of our families uh, may be familiar with. She will share some of the challenges that our families have shared with us around managing uh, remote learning and also how she's been managing her remote learning and what's help, helped her adjust and find balance um, while uh, managing her child and working from home. And Gwen Stevens, Executive Director of Achievement Network. She will share information on how to create a mindset to keep your child on track with educational success, how to use your history and what you have in the home to set a structure. So thank you, welcome. Excited to have these women to share and moms um, on things that will be very helpful for our families here. Um, so let's get started. Henna, parents are adjusting to remote learning for their children along with working from home or they're essential workers, or maybe dealing with job or income loss, or they may be dealing with health issues. Share with us some of, some of the challenges that parents have expressed and that you yourself have had to navigate. Um, thank you, Carolina, for the question. It's very important. Um, I talk to parents on a daily basis, and I talk to everyone from different community, different job standards. Some are essential workers, some are, um, have the benefit of working from home. It's very difficult. Naturally, children will not listen to parents the way they listen to teachers. So it will be difficult. Uh, remote learning will never be the same as a physical classroom learning, but we just have to make the best of it. As I speak to parents on a daily basis, I'm hearing stories where parents have children in different grades, multiple children. And it's very difficult to uh, meet the requirements of different kids in different grades. Uh, I've also had parents that are essential workers themselves and um, some of them have to take kids with them to work um, because they don't have um, enough child support. Hearing these stories are very difficult. It's very emotional, but um, we just have to get through it. Um, as a parent myself, I'm experiencing it firsthand working from home and managing a child in school. It's difficult, um, but I think if you can just get through this, set some time for your work and set aside some time for the children's work, I think we can do this. And Hannah, there, was there was something you said that you did with your child to help manage your, um, to help manage like remote learning and, and your space. What did you Absolutely. Do? I think if we can try to at least mimic the classroom setting, um, have like posters, 
have books in a side to mimic the library, um, even put up a whiteboard or a chalkboard if we have. That way they have a visual reference of the classroom that gets them in the mood of being in a classroom. I think that helped me a lot. So um, that's a good technique to, you know, increase the remote learning more, uh, much better than it can be. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing that. Yeah. And, you know, Alexandra, I think one of the things is, you know, there may not be enough devices or, you know, as Hannah mentioned, there may be more than one child. And so like keeping attention, what are some ways, opportunities, positive ways that um, families can consider to keep children engaged, especially if there's multiple children in the home. Um, can you share a little more? Can you share some of that? Okay, as a teacher, um, I think it's very important to have routine and we can try and create a routine in our homes that best fit our schedules. Um, you can have the kiddos get up, get dressed, kind of keep some sense of normalcy for them. Um, and just keep a schedule that works best for you and your family. Uh, and like you were saying, many parents, many families don't have a one-to-one -one ratio in devising, so creating a schedule will help. Um, I can give you an example. You can have one child on in the morning, if that's possible, uh, for a two-hour block. And then once they're done, the device can be moved on to another child because there's many families who have multiple children. Uh, when they're done with being with technology, they can take a brain break, maybe complete some written work. Um, if it's possible, even speak to peers on, on a phone if they have, speak to someone at home. Because one thing I think kids aren't getting that they do get in school is that peer interaction, a social interaction. And that keeps them engaged and looking forward to something. Um, there was something yes, also, Alexandra, that you shared around um, with like uh, empowering your old, your eldest sibling and sort of activities that siblings can do together um, that can alleviate a little bit from the parent side. Definitely, I would recommend for all parents to use their resources, and that may be an older sibling. Um, the older you can empower them, just let them know. I think having a dialogue with the kids and letting them know that they are so important in this working. Um, for myself, I have a 12 year old and an eight year old and I'm currently working from home. Sometimes my eight year old may have questions and I'm on a session so I can't respond. My 12 year old steps in and she tries to help her sister as much as possible. And I let her know how important she is and how thankful I am that she can step in and do that. Um, I think just to keep the motors working and to keep everything going, everyone needs to know in your home that everyone contributes. Um, another idea that we do here is we created a book club and we separate a time of the day where you can choose anything that you want to read. It can be a book, it could be a comic book, just something that would keep them engaged in reading. And we set a, a time, we read, it can be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then have a dialogue about what was read. Um, another way to keep your kids engaged, especially the younger ones, would be making learning a little more fun, maybe having a scavenger hunt at home. Uh, I can give you an example for the K to second. Uh, look for something in the house that starts with a B or if you're doing rhyming words, look for something that rhymes with cat, just to keep them active uh, and not just stagnant sitting and just learning in front of the screen. There's other ways to learn their um, emergent skills. Uh, I have another example, even for parents who are doing sight words, you create cards with anything in your home, throw the sight words all over your house and just have them mimic an animal and say, well, hop like a bunny and bring me the word and. Um, this keeps them engaged. They are moving. And um, you can even have an older sibling play a game with the younger one. Um, most important, um, I think, is having is talking to them. Yeah, can you share a little more about the dialogue with the, the student around setting expectations and sort of getting their feedback on how they're day is going? Like how can those, how do you run those conversations? 
um, even in the classroom, I find just even at towards the end of the day, going back and asking them how they felt they did, asking them what they learned, um, validate their feelings um, because they're going through an emotional roller coaster as well. Um, even especially for our younger ones, they may not really understand what's going on. Um, so acknowledging how they're feeling and going back and saying, well, you did a good job and what, do you, what didn't you understand? Um, and maybe we can go through it together. Uh, that's very important at, at this time because many of them are scared. They don't know what's going on. So keeping a routine and saying, okay, tomorrow morning we're going to wake up, we're going to get dressed, and they know, okay, this is going to be the structure of every day. Thank you for sharing that, Alexandra. Gwen, I want to dive in more into the parent guardians uh, who you share that are in essence a child's first teacher. And so what can they do to reinforce a mindset of success and leverage, for example, to some of the points that Alexandra shared, um, things that they have in the home or things that are part of their family to keep them on track with educational success? Yeah, so first I wanna thank you for having me um, to support this amazing organization, New York City Kids Rise. Um, and as you said, I think that it is uh, very important for families to know and understand that they are their child's first teacher and that they have a tremendous ability to impact positively on their lives. Even in this unprecedented situation that we're in, it's important to be hopeful and to create a vision for your child of them advancing um, to college. And so in thinking about all of that, in the home, while there is remote learning taking place, there are many, many things that we can do that don't require a device um, or a computer. Uh, and it's important that families begin to think about where their students are in terms of developing what we call foundational skills. My colleagues have alluded to many of those in terms of sight words and phonics and activities that require students to think about uh, words and sounds and the relationship between written letters and spoken words. Um, all of this is in service of building a strong reader and students who are strong readers often have greater success in school and it puts them on a pathway uh, for college. And so there are a number of activities that families can do in the home. The first one primarily is be really developing language skills and families can develop language skills, as Alexandra said, by talking to them, speaking with them, helping them to uh, learn language, both in their own language as well as English, help them to develop vocabulary and help them to begin to develop and build their general knowledge. And so sharing cultural stories, uh, sharing experiences, supporting your child to build vocabulary, naming objects in the home, even if you go outside, naming objects and making connections between objects in terms of categories and context, but also building your child's general knowledge so that when they're reading, they're connecting and making meaning of the words and of the context that they are reading in. I think most importantly, it's important, as everyone has said, uh, to really read to your child every day. So reading, talking, having activities where you're writing. I love the sight word activity, association with sounds. All of those things are important uh, for your child to begin what we call foundational skills, which is the pathway for them to develop to become um, strong readers. I think that uh, it's important to acknowledge that Parents don't have to be teachers and don't have to be perfect at doing this, but just by setting a positive tone, encouraging their child that this is the beginning of learning and building a mindset around the importance of learning and developing these skills um, as a pathway. And I and that's thank you, Gwen. And you know, with what Alexandra shared and, and Hannah and I, the point around you know. Um, the, about around pressure and not you know, feeling that things have to go perfectly um, and just knowing that there's opportunity to make this positive and leverage what's in the home and stories and, you know, finding ways to be creative in, in, in sort of this reality we're in. So Donna, I think 
um, you know, we love to hear around how families can, you know, the Department of Education has done, you know, a, a tremendous job, you know, making sure that um, moving quickly to have our, our children as, as set up as, you know, as, uh, as positively as possible in the, in, uh, in this remote learning reality. So can you share some of the resources um, or things that the families can, may not be aware of that they should take advantage of um, and anything else that you think will be very useful in terms of communicating with the schools? Oh, definitely, definitely. I, I listened to the uh, ladies speaking and I, I saw some of the comments in the chat. Um, learning is everywhere. Learning is not just to sit down and read this book and do this work. Um, learning is counting how many cookies are, are in the, on the dish. And then when your brother or sister eats one, how many do you have left? We have an excellent uh, video, actually one of our counselors took of his son working with the para through video with this type of subtraction. And we do have activities on our DOE website um, that if a family cannot engage uh, with the, the program that the school is offering online, they can do the learn at home activities and it's for every grade. Um, they can take it when it, maybe seven o'clock at night is, is better for them. They can use those activities across grades with whoever you have in your household. Um, this week, in fact, during our recess that wasn't really recess, there were tons of wonderful activities, fun for the entire family. Going to Disneyland on a virtual roller coaster, um, sharing stories, making flip books, a lot of materials are available on the schools.nyc.gov website um, that families can tap into um, to use at their, at their schedule what works for them. Um, also, Hannah mentioned that many families have to work uh, essential workers. Um, while most of us are working at home and on pause, there are people out there that are keeping things going. And if it weren't for them, we would not be able to be working at home. So we have to thank our heroes and look out for them. And the DOE has established what we call regional enrichment centers for our essential workers. Originally, it started just for healthcare workers, and now we're realizing there are more heroes. Um, we have nursing home workers, we have supermarket workers that are keeping things moving, MTA. Um, so if you are one of the essential workers and you need somewhere for your child during the day, our regional operation centers are open. You can apply to see if you qualify if they're in your area. They are located um, in every borough. Um, so you can apply and if you qualify, you'll be admitted and enrolled in one of these centers. Um, they are fully functioning centers. They're in our schools, right in our neighborhoods. We have licensed teachers, we have social workers, we have nurses, um, we have a, a full range of, of food services, safety agents, Everyone that you would have in your regular day school um, are available to support our families. In fact, we have more, more adults than we have children in these rec centers. It's a wonderful place. And they're, they're, the children are working on the work that their school provides for them. And they just have the support of, of teachers. Uh, the schools also have... Uh, on their website, if you can get to your school's website, you can contact your school, your school's principal or the parent coordinator to discuss what your needs might be. Um, we also have, uh, we're still running through the end of the month. If a family has several children and they need a device for other children, they can apply to borrow an iPad or a laptop um, through the DOE site. And I believe we're going to put some of those up at the end on how to do that. But if you go to the DOE website, um, you can request to borrow a device. Um, and as, as long as we have some left, we're trying to get them out there into the community. And these devices are Wi-Fi enabled. Many families don't have adequate um, internet connectivity where they might be living. So we are looking to make sure that these devices are Wi-Fi enabled. So if you don't have internet in your house, 
devices can search it in the community. That's another thing that we have. Um, we also have, I, I, you may have heard the term Thrive, uh, which is an initiative of a first lady. Um, we have consultants and social workers that are available to support schools and families in connecting to a multitude of services, whatever it is the family needs, whether it be a uh, food pantry, how do I get delivery if I'm sick, um, if you need financial support and you don't know where to go. Um, our schools are really a hub of information for families, as well as food in our schools. We have 400 um, food, food hubs um, throughout the city where families can go and pick up three meals um, for their entire family. There's no identification necessary. They just are families that, that need the food. And I don't know if you've been to the supermarket lately, but there's not much in the supermarkets. Um, so this, this is free food that is available to our New York City residents, our families and our communities um, that they should take advantage of. And they are in neighborhood schools. So the DOE is trying to be that source to keep the families connected, to keep our communities going. Learning is just part of what we do. Um, you can't learn if you haven't eaten this morning, if you need breakfast, or you don't know if, if you're going to be able to have dinner. Um, so we're trying to connect our families to make sure their needs are being taken care of. And if we can't do it, there's someone in New York City that can. And these are so such good points, Donna, and, and you know, acknowledging our essential workers that um, you know have really gone beyond above and beyond to to keep the city moving and keep us safer and you know helping us move move quickly to normalcy. Um, we're getting some questions from um, from our families on social, and one of the things that they ask is, you know. There, one parent mentions that kids don't want to focus on schoolwork in the home environment, that it's hard to keep them on track and understand that this isn't playtime. So uh, Gwen or Alexandra or Donna, can sure. one of you jump in and share what, what would be some practical examples that they can consider? Yeah. So um, I think that, um, and I think it was Alexandra who mentioned the idea of a schedule. But prior to that, I think it's very important for families to emphasize uh, to their children that it's not playtime um, and that what they're doing is actually preparing for future, that this will eventually end. And when it does, there's preparation that we can do now so that we are ready for that future. I think then after you know having time to speak with your child daily about the expectations for the day, about their goals, and about the success that they can achieve during the day, I think then it's important to create activities that relate to what the child likes. So ask the child what would they like to learn or vary the activities, even um, not only with using devices, but also with reading and or even with television where you can talk about the show and um, experience the show together and ask questions and build language. So there are a number of opportunities, but I think it's important for families to realize that they do want to support their child to think about the future, that this will be over at some point and we have to prepare now. Alexandra or Don, anything you would want to add to Gwen's comments? And I think this crisis has taken away the big things that we used to do, um, but they have to, as, as Gwen said, stay hopeful because there are so many little things in our lives that we may not have noticed before, and now we do notice. Um, the sound of the birds in the morning when you wake up. Um, when you when you stand in your front doorway, you know, do you smell flowers? Do you smell your neighbors cooking? Um, things that that we might have missed, and we're we're absorbing and we're learning in everything that we do, and that's preparing us for our future. Um, because after this, we're going to be so in tuned and connected to each other like never before. Um, so it, it it seems like we're disconnected, but it's only to reconnect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another question that we've received is around, um, you know, if I, if 
if the parent doesn't know the subject um, or doesn't understand it well enough to explain it to the child, um, what do you recommend? How can the parent approach this so that they can, you know, keep their child forward, going forward? Uh, one of the resources that I use myself um, at times, because I do have a seventh grader, and sometimes I need a refresher, <laughs> um, I use Khan Academy. And they don't only have math, I use them a lot for math, but they have different lessons and they've actually uploaded more lessons for ELA, um, science, and they run an entire lesson that you can watch with your child. Um, and you just type in the subject area uh, and then you look for a lesson in that child's grade level. And they start from K to a AP classes. So they go all the way up until the high school level. Okay. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to add, but we have a question around the regional enrichment center, Donna, and um, when are they operating from, I guess, from what's the schedule? So um, I think- um, They are uh, Monday through Friday. I believe the time is eight until six. 5.30 or 6 o'clock, but if you go to the DOE website, um, they will explain the times, the locations, and who qualifies uh, for enrollment. Elvin, okay, we'll, um, we'll share those resources um, um, after, the, uh, after this concludes. Uh, we'll put those links to make it available. Mm -hmm. um, another question that we've gotten is around um, sort of, and, and I think it, it came up earlier around um, uh, families that may be working remotely and the child is, you know, uh, maybe wanting their attention and interrupting and they may not have somebody else to sort of help them in, in that moment. And so what are some things that they can consider when they're, you know, in a meeting, you know, a remote meeting, but the child is looking for the parent's attention? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a tough one. Um, but I think, <laughs> I think, um, you know, it's, it's important for uh, children to understand their parents' experience as well um, as, the, of, as their own experience. And so I think that, you know, mommy's working, daddy's working, it's your time to do your work. And then when we finish, we can do our work together. So conversations about expectations and conversations about um, sort of what is what the day is going to look like are helpful. Um, in this in this circumstance, I know that it's challenging uh, to keep young children. They want our attention all the time, but you know, again, setting expectations and boundaries around time and rhythm and routine, I think, is something that can help to address that. Okay. Um, for myself, I've created signs uh, <laughs> that says, "You know, mommy is working," <laughs> bold <laughs> letters, um, just so they kind of know but also kind of giving them my schedule. Well, today at 11, from 11 to three, mommy has sessions. I, I would love to help you, but I can't right now because I have to work. Um, get done what you can. Um, and then I can also, I leave other resources for them around, they, you know, if they have toys and then I get back to them afterwards to kind of see what they needed from me during that time. But it is very difficult, especially for the younger kiddos, because they just want that attention. Yeah, I was actually just going to add to Alexandra, as a, as a mom of a young child, he's three and a half, so it's very difficult to um, set that rule or regulation that it's mommy's work time. And I had him on my lap in a couple of meetings and he waved at everyone, so, and I'm pretty sure um, we, what Gwen said, it's very important. Uh, and it's great if we can do it from early stage, even if they're very young, if we can set that standard. I think it's not only going to help us now, it's going to help the, the kids in their future. It's going to be a great development for them. Thank you. I hope that there are some helpful tips. The posters are and, and some of these things are really great. Um, some more questions we're getting. Um, so, and we know, and Donna, we know a lot of things are continuing to evolve with the schools. And um, and so one of the concerns is around children falling behind and with their work or 
um, you know, how they're gonna, you know, how are they gonna be graded in terms of attendance and just generally in terms of how they're doing um, for the next school year. Anything, okay. anything you can share around that? Well, schools are trying to reach out to families um, pretty much on a daily basis to see how they're doing, to make sure that um, they're able to keep up, if not, how, how the school can assist. Um, so it's really important to communicate um, and to be available when the school does outreach. If you're not living at home, I know a lot of people um, haven't been able to keep up with their, their cell phones and may be sharing a phone with someone else or the child's on the phone doing work and they can't answer. So we have to really communicate. We have to become partners. Um, schools only understand their point of view unless they're told from a family, this is what I'm dealing with and this is where I need help. So families really need to be um, clear about what help they need, what schedule works best for them and how they can communicate and connect what is being available. If they find that the child is falling behind to communicate that, um, to ask could someone maybe do a one-on-one -on -one session, a uh, video session with that child to explain what's expected. Um, and that might even be during mommy's work time. The child can do their work time one-on-one -on -one with a teacher or in a group. Several of our schools have been able to set up video classrooms um, where they're engaged with the child in a, in a forum similar to what we're using right here. Um, so that can be helpful. Um, in terms of grading and, and things of that nature, that's evolving. Right now it's about survival. It's about doing the best that we can. Um, and everyone knows teachers are dealing with what you just described in their own home. Um, so we understand that no one's perfect right now. And we're not looking for perfect. We're looking for getting through this together and making sure we emerge on the other side stronger than ever. So it is evolving and we are flexible. Department of Education is flexible. Our attendance is about, have we heard from you? Um, have you communicated your need? And are you trying and are we trying? How are we connecting? So, so it's, don't, don't worry about that right now. Do the best that you can. Keep up the communication. Communication and connections are key. Thank you, Donna, for that additional context. Um, some more around resources. Um, this is particular for a parent with, a, with older a fifth grader. Um, what are more exciting or engaging reading resources that can be, um, you know, leverage for fifth graders that may want something, you know, that will keep them more focused? I don't know, Alexandra or, or Gwen or Donna or Hannah. There are several websites. And I, if you go into our Learn at Home resources, um, there are... Um, resources for to, for reading ideas their websites that families can connect to um i'm not instructional so i don't have it right at my fingertip um but i think uh maybe alexandra knows was it books.com there was some yeah. resource that was right yeah there's home. there's a reading a to z yeah. um epic is another resource uh, mm -hmm. they have several books um, there that the child can access and they just put in what grade they're in and it will give them several options. Um, so those are different resources that they can look at. The reading A to Z can give them a list of books that would be geared towards their reading level. There's also, also, um, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, please go ahead, Hannah. I was just going to add to Alexandra saying there's a lot of um, Amazon books that you can also download. Those are very easy to use, user friendly, and um, they have books that are age appropriate so parents can download them. Yes, I was just going to add that there are a number of uh, websites. Uh, Bookshare is one that also provides uh, free downloadable books, um, and of course, reading A to Z. But I think that we'll be able to share. Uh, many of the resources um, once we're done. So yeah. So after for everyone watching, we're gonna share these um, some of these resources that our experts here have shared, so that you can look into them and see what makes sense for you. Um, 
one more question around um, uh, around for for Donna around the devices, the remote learning devices. If they have not received one yet, um, what is the best thing they can do to follow up, or what would be um, most efficient for the parent to try to get one? If they they need to go back to our website, the the information is there. If you're uh, following up on the status of your device, um, one of the problems that we've had is. Uh, incorrect addresses going into the system. So you do need to follow up if you have not heard. Um, we are mailing out centrally some work while we're waiting for devices um, to be, to be uh, distributed. But if you have not heard, you should go back and check uh, on the website. There is an email for you to reach out to to check the, um, the device. Um, there's also a telephone number I have here um, to order a device if you haven't already. It's 718-935-5100. And that might be an easier way if, if you don't have access to the website uh, to make that call. But we are trying to get devices into the hands of as many children as possible. We've had wonderful uh, donations to the Department of Education um, for to make sure that all children have access. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. And again, um, to our families watching, we'll make this the phone number. Um, we'll put them in the comments and we'll put a link to where you can find some of the resources our experts have shared. Um, so let's jump a little bit into more because remote learning, you know, it's, the parent is obviously at the center of this, a parent guardian. Can we, um, can you share an example um, that can help parents, guardians to sort of think about how they can balance their time and have some time for themselves, continue to keep themselves effective because you know they're at home, they're working from home or they may be dealing with other circumstances. So what are some things as parents and as educators um, that could help a family consider to find some time for themselves? Um, so I personally think it's it's very difficult to be a mom and a teacher at the same time. It's a, it's like we're wearing multiple hats, but I believe all parents do that on a daily basis anyways. It's just during this time, it's just a little bit uh, more intense or much harder. Um, it's very important to keep our sanity. So I think if the parent or, you know, it's, it's very important for the parent to take out some time. So I would advise what I do is take out at least one hour of the day to just separate myself from everything and everyone um, sort of meditate or do things that I enjoy, for example, crafting. This way, it just keeps the relationship very much healthier. It keeps uh, keeps the parents and the children balance during this time. So I believe it's very important. Yes, for myself, um, sometimes I do find it difficult to find that time um, because I, you know, I started working out, but my kids have gravitated and started working out with me. <laughs> but uh, one thing that I find for myself that helps is keeping the social connection. So I find time of day to call my siblings, call uh, friends who are in other states or even here in the state I'm currently in, just to kind of see how they're doing, how they're coping, um, reminisce about memories, just that keeping that social connection alive uh, for my day eases my my day. Nice. Um, so I agree with everything that my colleagues have shared. Um, I think for myself, um, I try to have a period of exercise in the morning and some period of quiet time in the afternoon. And during that time, um, it could be reading or it could be uh, meditation, but I agree with everyone that it is important to create space and to create mindfulness around this whole situation so that we're not agitated and that we're calm and that we're able to focus and prioritize um, and have self-care for both ourselves um, as well as for our families. And I, actually, I've I've learned how to use technology. Um, <laughs> this is new for me. This is not this is not my my uh, usual skill. But um, just last Sunday for Easter dinner, 
Um, I had a virtual dinner. Um, my my children, my niece and my nephew are spread out. And uh, we all came together at seven o'clock on a, on a Zoom uh, meeting and we ate together. Um, and it was, it was just felt like our usual dinner. You know, they were arguing with each other and <laughs> not eating too much. So it was, uh, it was really good. It was really good um, to, bring, to bring the family together from all over the country. They usually fly in, but they weren't able to, so we flew in through Zoom. It was great. It was yeah, great. I, I think I think the the lesson here and a reminder is that you know we're that we we don't need to seek perfection. Be patient with ourselves. You know, we're all in this together in different ways, um, and so in, to the extent that it's possible, we can remain connected, whether it's through a phone call or you know you know through video or through Google Classroom or however it's possible for that family. And a lot of the things that you all, you all have shared, especially I think there's so much value in, in um, what you bring as a parent and your family and your history and the ways that you can be creative. And also know that, you know, this is a time to do things that work best for you. Um, and that we're, you know, we're all living this re reality. And there's some positive, like you said, there's, um, you can hear the birds, you know, um, you're getting to spend more time together, even though, you know, you, you may want to break. Um, but I think there's so much value around the things that, um, that, in, that we're in this together and that we can just remember to be positive. I do want to give a shout out to some of our school district 30 um, community, Principal Jagan, Ms. Blanco, uh, we have PS112, Ms. Hamilton from PS127, um, and a lot of our educators, also our school community superintendent, Dr. Composto, is watching and has been very supportive and amazing in um, working with uh, NYC Kids Rise to provide more resources to our families and be connected, um, you know, through this time. So special shout out to him and to all our um, schools and um, for for joining and 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 helping connecting us to our families. Um, before we close out, is there anything else that um, you want to share, each of you, in terms of a resource or uh, a closing word or tip that might be useful for families to consider as they um, as they continue to you know manage this remote learning reality with their children? Carolina, I think that's very important what you said. Um, it's very important to stay saying here and um, also Alexandra mentioned that being connected, she calls her friends and siblings. I think not only for us, it's very important for kids to do that. So I, what I do, and I can use that as a tip for other families that are watching, um, have them involved with cousins, have them a video chat or a Zoom, do like a play date. I think that really helps kids um, get through the situation. Uh, it's important for kids to communicate with peers or cousins, loved ones. So um, I think that's a good practice. I have my my child um, do like a family video chat with all the cousins. So he really enjoys that. So that's something parents can do more often now. I also think I one thing to add um, might be that we talked a lot about creating rhythms around the house um, and uh, Donna talked about food. One sort of natural rhythm um, that's a great opportunity for you to bond with your child is around cooking and around mealtime. And so creating and making mealtime a part of a learning activity where you're counting ingredients, naming them, um, talking about what you think the food is going to taste like, just all kinds of language associated with the rhythm of both breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I think is also something that's calming um, and it can be a, a family activity. Okay, well, I want a, to piggyback on what Hannah said. I think that's a great idea just to keep them connected because that is such an important component when they're in school is to socialize with their peers and they're, they're not getting that right now. So to be able to either talk on the phone or have a Zoom, um, for my kids, I know it helps, especially I have a preteen, just talking to her friends about how they're doing in school or just how their day was, just 
makes her so happy. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to salute all these parents for this incredible juggling act <laughs> that they're managing during these unprecedented times. And I want them to keep in mind that you need to adapt this method of learning for what works best for your family around your schedule. And uh, like Carolina said, it doesn't have to be perfect. That perfection is not needed, but just keep in mind that it needs to work for you. Um, talk to the, your kids, um, get involved with how they're feeling as well. And if I can just add, um, knowing what's available in our awesome city, um, not just in our school system. 311 is a great resource find out what's available. I, I know there was a question about library services. The public library has offered um, virtual connections to all of their resources. You can always call 311, find out what's out there, what's, what is available to have fun, what's available for necessities. Um, New York City, New York City has it all. Um, we have fabulous people. You can learn another language. You can communicate. You can take a trip around the world virtually. Um, we just live in an awesome city. And I, I have to give a shout out to the DOE also. Um, I think we have done an awesome job in a matter of days. We went from 1,800 school buildings to connections for 1.1 million children. Um, we haven't connected with them all, but we're working on it. And uh, hopefully within the next few weeks, every child that was in our buildings will now be connected in some way um, to continue learning. And our awesome parents, without them, we wouldn't be a school system and we wouldn't be families. So that's important also. We have to, we have to connect to, to everyone. And uh, just thank you for this opportunity to be a part of this. Thank you. And I think... Uh as we hear and continue to remind families, you know, these are unprecedented times, but there is some positive in here with the amazing uh, work that parents are doing and families are doing and the children themselves are doing. And of course our heroes, essential workers that are keeping the city moving. And we're here, this is, we, we are launching this series because we want to provide families with resources and information and talk to people um, from the community and experts that can help them navigate through different things. And actually in, in two weeks, we'll have uh, a town hall around um, uh, financial information on how to navigate some of the financial resources available um, for families that may need uh, more of that information. So um, we'll be sharing that, but I wanna thank our experts, um, Alexandra, Gwen, Donna, Hena, thank you for joining us and for sharing such useful tips for families. I think learning about the schedule and things like having a board or using the resources that our great city has uh, with doing virtual tours, um, thinking about a nook in whatever space you have to create for your child. Um, these are so, and, and so many more, I, I, we've seen families have shared ideas around institutions of working. Um, using the household, which Gwen, you mentioned, and Alexander, you mentioned as well, um, uh, talking to uh, the teachers and other child classmates to help them set up cl a Google Classroom. Uh, you know, if you have multiple children working with them one at a time and not feeling like you have to do everything and using your phone to be able to get someone uh, show the teacher that the work has been done. So there's, there's so much, and we're gonna continue to share that. This is a community that's supporting each other. Um, and we're seeing the great work from all our families and, and, and all our heroes that are really helping us get through this. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, for our families watching, again, we'll have this video available. Um, it'll, it'll be available obviously in English and we'll also have it in Spanish and in Bangla. Um, and we'll be sharing the resources that um, our speakers here have shared so that you can look at them and see what makes sense for you to um, to leverage. Um, so with that, thank you, Dr. Composto, who I know is watching. Thank you so much for supporting us and um, for the great work the schools have been doing in this time. Queens has been the hardest hit and the way that this school community has come together has been just amazing. And it was wonderful seeing our parent coordinators and our principals in our schools on the, on the, on the Facebook Live. So thank you. And with that, 
Have a great evening and we'll be seeing you all soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Stay Bye -bye. safe. <laughs>